Okay, here we are at 3800 Silver Oak Street in Dayton, Ohio. I believe this has a Huber Heights address, but it's actually Mad River Schools, so Riverside. Um, but this is the inside. We'll go ahead and take a look. This is three bedroom, two bath uh, property, and it's built in 1966, 1500, a little over 1500 square feet on about a third acre lot. So this is a VA owned home, government owned home, uh, going through obviously a foreclosure type of situation. And uh, so I think there's some value in it. It's, going, it's listed right now at 109. And I know there are several offers in on it as we speak right now, but um, potentially could be an option for anybody that wants to scoop in and isn't afraid to roll up their sleeves. So mostly from what I'm seeing, is it's cosmetic type of things, but a lot of cosmetic type of things that will add up. And depending on how uh, handy you are around actually fixing up anything, or depending on if you know anybody that is, then uh, it could you know reduce the cost, depending on if you're pretty frugal with that. So, but anyway, so that looked like, uh, we'll go back in, do the normal tour. This looks like the, the living room area. So basically you have a double door set up. With your entryway, you do have basically a coat closet right here. A lot of old school pieces in here. So these are the old metal sliding doors for the coat closet. That goes to the bedrooms down there. All the flooring has been ripped out. This looks like the old asbestos tiles, uh, potentially right here, uh, that uh, they probably just put carpet over. So it needs to be removed and mitigated if it is, uh, the asbestos tiles. Uh, looks like they got rid of a lot of it, probably had carpet in here, got rid of it. Um, there was a little bit of a dog smell, so I think probably they got rid of the carpets to get rid of that. Um, you know, so, but uh, anyway, nice big room. All the fixtures are old. Pretty much everything in this is old. So almost a complete gut. Although you probably don't have to redo the drywall unless you want to reconfigure potentially. The, the kitchen's on the other side of this wall and you really could open this up into a nice big open area if you wanted to open that up a little bit. But uh, one thing that kind of sticks out is the sliding door. There's actually several sliding doors on this one. It's the old aluminum sliding doors. Definitely not efficient for you know keeping and trapping in heat or air. Um, you know, and then you know, they, I mean, it'll last forever pretty much, but uh, they're not what most people want. They usually don't slide too well. Um, you know, they're just old. So then you have like a bonus room in here. Kind of looks like to me like a dining room, and it has the sliding doors that you normally would see on a closet uh, installed to go into this area here. So I think this is more like a dining room um, that leads to, with more sliding doors, aluminum sliding doors to the back area here. That's the master suite over there. So the master bedroom that does have an attached bathroom that leads out to this deck, obviously needs some uh, TLC. So pretty much, uh, needs all of it repainted, refloored, and uh, looks like you know the windows are a little bit older. So these are aluminum windows as well. These are the crank style aluminum windows. So as you can see, it looks like they actually put some tape. This is some uh, clear tape right there over the gaps because it probably uh, air seeps through, especially in the winter time. So. Um, one thing that, uh, that, that needs to be um, mindful of. So a window, so that we're talking basically a redo in here. So renovation uh, windows typically can cost 300 bucks each installed. Um, it kind of depends, you know, on how good of quality windows you want. You can go higher, you can go lower. It just kind of depends. 300 is about average. So add up all the windows and that's going to be your cost on the windows to get that efficient. And so this is the kitchen. Uh, these are basically laminate um, tiles. Just a cheap variety of laminate. This is also your laminate Formica uh, countertops. All the cabinets are older. Appliances are older. 
that goes into the another living room, more of like the family room. One thing I really like, we'll go up and get a close look of it, but that's the wood burning stove. This would be the laundry room with a nice little hole on the other side there. Looks like they probably had some plumbing issues. So that's an upgraded panel. That's a good panel there. Uh, so we have a 200 amp panel and you have some room for expansion. Looks like they might have taken one out. Might have been like a hot tub or something. I don't know. Actually, we could probably see. Looks like a gar uh, garage. Garage. So that had something in the garage. Maybe a, a welder set or something. 220. I don't know what uh, would need 220 volts in the garage, but probably maybe a welder. So looking like the water heater is definitely older. I'd say that's over 20 years. Sometimes you can see on the sticker and I don't really see a oh, 1988. Wow. That thing is up there in age for sure. But that's one of the things. So a lot of times you don't have to replace them, you know, when they come up on their reliable lifespan, usually about 15 to 17 years is the reliable lifespan of a water heater. Um, you know, but you could keep them longer. It's just, you risk potential, you know, malfunction. And sometimes, you know, water heaters can do damage, especially if it blows, you know, through the, the inside layer and then it basically has a leak, then you all have a leak throughout here. And that can cause issues elsewhere, especially with carpet or flooring. Um, and you're talking about scolding hot water. So, you know, this is this could be melt melting something that the water flows into. Um, you know, kind of rare, I guess that would happen. But, um, you know, obviously one thing to be mindful of. So this is a Kenmore. Also looks a little bit older. I'd say probably over 20 years on this one as well. Uh old uh, Sears service, although, you know, Sears did go out of business, their service is actually still in business. So if you want to, and one of the better ones, in my opinion, uh, Sears repair, appliance repair, um, they're probably one of the better ones. I think they get solid ratings. I've used them in the past. I really like them. Uh, they'll pretty much do anything, dishwashers, refrigerators. So missing some drywall. Definitely dirty, but everything looks pretty solid. I mean, I like to actually look at the wood. So that, that wood right there, it's actually a metal beam. That's an aluminum stud. So um, that's interesting. Normally houses don't have aluminum studs like that. So kind of interesting that they put that on there. You normally in a residential house have wood beams and studs. Um, aluminum is typically for your commercial outlets and um, mainly because you know wood is, is I think in my opinion more solid than the aluminum studs they bend um, you know and then uh, commercial buildings have the bigger solid iron you know and um, uh, heavier metals solid beams throughout so you can kind of gut the inner walls with lesser materials like aluminum studs, even though they're very solid going straight up and down if you put something on top of it, but they bend very easily. So they don't shift too well. Um, but anyway, so in the kitchen, this is a little eat-in area, nice little fixture there above the little eat-in kitchen. So cabinets, you know, some people like to do a complete restall on the cabinets. I actually like to reface and refinish the cabinets, um, which basically means you take off the front doors and um, take off the front doors and then you basically repaint them and then put a new countertop on it and it's fairly cheap to do that. That way you don't have to actually replace the entire cabinet. So these front doors can all be removed and you can put new doors on there that look nicer. Um, this can all be cleaned out. Usually the cabinets have good strong bones, you know, they're solid, you know, they're not going to fall down or anything. You put a new door on it, it can look like a totally different cabinet. Um, so there's cheap ways to actually make it look completely different and better um, than actually replace all of the cabinets. Even on the end here, you know, it's got the old wood siding, but you can actually put new, new materials on the end of it to make it look uh, a little bit more modern. So. 
But you know, if you want to actually change the configuration, maybe put a center island in there or something, you know, that could be a different way to go about it. So, but uh, anyway, that's the garage there. So this area has a really nice, um, big, wide bay window. And so it's uh, kind of nice to see that there. I think somebody's actually trying to come in, but this is the garage, nice two-story garage. I mean, a two-car garage with about two feet on each side. It's not too deep. Car's probably gonna end up right around here, so you might have a small little uh, area here to, um, to actually put some cabinets or something like that. I'm gonna try to speed it up. I think some people are behind us looking. So this would be like a linen closet. Again, with these uh, old asbestos tiles, you have some laminate tiles in here. This is your hall bath, full bath. Everything has been winterized. Old school tile. We'll go into the bedrooms. So one of the smaller bedrooms and a little bit of a closet here. Looks like you have some potential mold right here. That kind of looks like mold to me. Maybe just dirt. I'm not going to touch it though. Looks like laminate tiles. So could probably be easily wiped off if it is mold. So both of these bedrooms are on the smaller side. Probably couldn't fit a queen set on either one of them. Maybe a twin might be better. This is the master with a master bath. Walk-in closet. So there's plenty of space in the master. Masters are good size. So laminate countertops. That looks like, again, those asbestos tiles. Laminate tiles in here. Dirty insert, a little bit older. Bath insert. Really can be cleaned up pretty well though. I don't see a whole lot of expense. The biggest expense, really, in my opinion, for so far, this is a good, um, good size bedroom. Biz bigness, biggest expense is probably going to be the windows and the sliding doors, if you're going to replace them. And then obviously the kitchen. Kitchen can definitely cost more, actually. Depends on how you want to do the kitchen. So no stains on the ceiling. The ceilings look pretty good. And there's the other side of the little back patio. All the windows are older aluminum windows. So, you know, probably most people would put more money in the kitchen. That is definitely the best area to put their money in if you're gonna redo anything. Um, so you can spend, you know, upwards of 30,000 even plus, but I wouldn't in this, um, you know, you gotta know the neighborhood. So you don't wanna be by far putting too much money above what the comparables in the neighborhood are. Otherwise, you're basically just wasting your money. Unless you're just gonna use it and you enjoy it and don't mind losing money. But anyway, that's it for the inside. This is Howie with Team Next and Home Experts. If you have any questions, have any other requests, let me know. Signing off.